a southern kitchen in London that uses chopsticks. Almost all of my guys do. It's really funny to watch us in here cooking fried chicken and plating it with chopsticks. From every book I've ever read on management, people don't work for anybody because of the money. They don't work for anybody because of job security or the opportunity to learn. They work for a company because of recognition. What I do is I show, I teach, we engage. They can improve a dish. I, and I think a lot of really great chefs can listen to their number twos or their number ones, it's, or, or number threes even, you know? So um, that's how it operates here. You can't run many business and let everybody do what they want to do. No, you have to have rules. But after if we do work on dishes and things like this, I let them, let them a bit go free. You know, I say to them, I want, uh, I want a cabbage puree. And I will ask two or three people to do one. And they will do three different ways because it's three different people. And from this, we can, one of them will go on the menu. Discipline is everything. Uh, I treat myself as an army, uh, meaning is they need to, needs to be someone who's speaking, the other one answer and do the job. For me, it's like a mission. They need to be completed. No matter what happened, we need to deliver something to the customer. I know uh, Italian kitchen, everybody thinks it's going to be like a market. You know, someone comes, hey, blah, blah. But no here, I'm where I'm, I came from, uh, French very strict. One of the biggest words is discipline for me. Almost like my, my father was in the army as well. He's in the medical corps in the army, so maybe that's where it comes from. But they need to be almost a military run. Um, especially when you're talking about accolades such as Michelin stars, one of the key words is consistency. Whether it's you know a quiet Monday lunch or a packed Saturday night dinner or a full hotel for Valentine's Day, it doesn't matter. The standard has to be exactly the same. Doesn't matter if it's a chef's days off, doesn't matter if so-and-so is on holiday, doesn't matter if there's a leak in the roof, it doesn't matter if the gas goes off in the middle of service or the kitchen portal can't work, it doesn't matter. No excuses, you cannot tolerate any sort of uh, deviance from uh, the, act the standards that we set in place and to do that you have to have discipline so I run it very very strictly I'm not, I'm not a, a big one for like you know being a big ogre or a scream or a shout and that's not the point but just sticking to what the standards are every second of every day or every every service of the week. My background over the last 15 years and you know, I worked with some really strict chefs but strict in a good way is that everything we do we follow our recipe to the T we clean down at the same time, the whole kitchen cleans down together by the book, um, which is good for the guys below us because they, you know, they learn a lot of discipline through that and hopefully they'll progress and take that with them when they go on to their next kitchens. Time's moving on, those days are long gone I think where you can really disrespect people in front of other people. I don't think it's, it's, it's not big and it's not clever and it's ultimately you're just, you look, you look bad. My kitchens are all very calm, everyone gets along with their job. We have even music in our kitchen, no shouting, nothing. And no long hours. Apart from me, nobody really does more hours than they should. From the very, very early days, Rose and I, who both have a lot of children, I had five, she has four, um, we had the same politics, we had the same views, knew that we wanted to have a kitchen that treated people as individuals, that uh, respected people, that gave people time off two days a week, didn't have too many doubles, that gave people good salaries, that there would not be any bullying or shouting. We've always had an open kitchen the way we had it in our own house. You want to create a team that feel like they can have an opinion because I always thought that was really important when I was a sous chef um, or younger. I, I loved that my input got onto the menu and so you'll find that there's a culture evolves in the kitchen and definitely our kitchen here represents the people that are in it. Um, and I think that they get a lot out of that. I do. I really enjoy when my team sort of have an idea or, or come with a different technique or, or a way to solve a problem. Um, it's sort of the good bit of the job, I think. It's really rewarding. Um, I've worked in kitchens in the past where it's more of um, uh, a kitchen operated in a sense of fear, you know, of, of being afraid to mess up. But I don't think that works that well. I like to have my guys learning all the time and enthusiastic and, and, um, and just being happy to learn and work within a, a company that, that wants to do great food. In the River Cafe, we change the menu twice a day. So what you're doing every morning is coming in and writing the menu, 
The chefs are coming in and they're prepping whatever fish has been ordered and the lamb, the beef, the pigeon, whatever meat has been ordered. The kitchen porters do the squid and the scallops and the clams. Um, and while they're doing that, the waiters come in, they'll um, prep the spinach, they will wash it, they will chop the chilies, uh, they will peel the garlic, thyme and mint, um, marjoram. What that does is it makes the barrier between the chefs and the waiters um, lessen because they know each other's needs. And what it really does is it educates the waiters so that when they're serving um, soft severity, they know what's in it because they, they made it, they helped make it, but everybody's involved.